Well, no one has actually said what caused this deadly crane collapse in downtown Dallas near that area today. It is safe to say that the wind played a role here. Tonight, an in-depth look into how this investigation will likely unfold and why Texas crane operators were already under the microscope before today's accident. I-Team reporter Brian New joins us now live in Dallas with more on this. Brian. Steve, among the things that experts tell us that investigators will likely be looking at is were the proper precautions taken before the storm? Was this crane lowered at all? Was the boom in a park position? Oftentimes, it's actually recommended that the brake on the crane be released so it can spin with the wind. According to one industry report, one out of every four fatal crane accidents worldwide, wind was a major factor, as it likely was today. Oh my God, the crane is falling over. Oh my God. Well, crane accidents like the one we witnessed today are rare. They do happen, and likely more often than you realize. According to federal labor statistics, Texas is at the top of the list when it comes to fatal crane accidents, with nearly four times as many deaths as any other state. Real bad scenes, and I've never seen anything like it. In 2012, on the campus of the University of Texas, Dallas, a construction crane was being dismantled when it collapsed, killing Terry Weaver and his co-worker, Thomas Fairbrother. In 2017, a crane tipped over in downtown Dallas, killing worker Isidro Morales. When these two accidents happened, they were all over the local news. But the CBS 11i team found they are not the only fatal crane accidents to have occurred in North Texas. Geraldo Saldivar was working on a crane in Dallas in 2015 when he got caught between the boom and the truck. He was crushed to death. There's been others. Burl Strickland of Royce City, Renee Morris of Commerce, William Campbell of Alvarado. The CBS 11i team has found since 2012 at least eight workers in North Texas have been killed in crane accidents. Today marked the first time in the past decade that someone that wasn't working on the construction site was killed but there's been close calls before. I mean, we're going to be here a while. I mean, traffic is back that way and back this way, so. In 2016, this crane toppled along I-30 in Arlington, closing down the freeway for hours. Another fell late last year in this busy University Park neighborhood where a school was under construction. All of these crane accidents in North Texas have caught the attention of the federal government, which is why late last year, OSHA put the construction industry in Texas on notice renewing a program that calls for an increase in crane inspections in the region, noting that the problem may be far greater than the elevated risk reported by employers. In 2017, OSHA conducted 77 crane inspections in the Texas region, finding 65 violations. 71% were serious, willful, or repeat. And OSHA plays a vital part, but they're just handcuffed. Attorney Dwayne Dent is a personal injury lawyer who specializes in crane accidents. He says the problem is the penalties for those violations are not stiff enough. Before today, in every fatal crane accident investigation in North Texas since 2012, at least one serious violation was issued by OSHA. But the majority of the time, the I-team found the fine for each death was less than $10,000. Now, when it comes to securing a crane in high winds, OSHA refers to the manufacturer's recommendations. Many cranes are designed to withstand winds up to 145 miles per hour. You'll often see cranes still up even during hurricanes. Now, the wind gusts today over at Love Field were recorded at 71 miles per hour. We do not know what the manufacturer's recommendation for this particular crane is. With the I-Team, Brian New, CBS 11 News.